We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish... <laughs>
just released a new analysis of global average temperatures showing that 2009 was tied as the second warmest year ever recorded. And looking just at the southern hemisphere, 2009 even broke the record as the warmest year ever in this half of the world. In fact, 2009 was virtually tied with five other recent years in its position as second warmest on record. 1998, 2002, 2003, 2006, and 2007. And it was only a fraction of a percent cooler than the warmest year, 2005. Yet when looking at global temperatures over a longer time frame, these scientists found a persistent warming trend over the past three decades with the average global temperature increasing by roughly a third of a degree Fahrenheit per decade. This past decade, from 2000 to 2009, was the warmest yet. And when looking back all the way to 1880, the year when precise temperature record keeping began, scientists observed about a one and a half degree Fahrenheit rise in global temperature. There are already beginning to be effects of one or two degrees warming. And if we get five or 10 degrees warming, Several decades downstream, there will be huge effects. GIST scientists came to these results after analyzing information from three sources. Data from more than a thousand weather stations around the globe, satellite observations of sea surface temperature, and measurements from Antarctic research stations. John Paul II, who is called De Labor Solis in the prophecies, which means the sun's eclipse, the sun's labor. He is the only pontiff on the list that was born on an eclipse and later entombed during an eclipse. Governor, I think there's a real serious problem. There is something that's going to be happening in the next couple of years. Scientists have reported that there is going to be solar flare activity that's going to be much, much more serious than what we've seen in the past. And this could cause major repercussions for people in this country. In about two years, the sun is going to go through a very unusual series of solar flares. The radiation that comes out from that solar flare, that electromagnetic energy, is going to hit the Earth.
what they're talking about is something major. Well, it can be bad enough that our crumbling electric grid could be hit in a major way. Now, we're not talking about a few cities losing power even. We're talking about it could be half the country. It could be more than that. The whole country? And the government's not concerned about this? They're not doing anything about it. That could be chaos. Why wouldn't they prepare us? What you're telling me is that they're preparing, meaning the government, the wealthy people, they're being taken care of and the hell with the rest of us? We're being ignored. Okay, look, there's a guy called Larry Joseph. He's a researcher. He's got the lowdown on all the solar storms, and NASA backs him. Well, then I think I'll take this one. I want to talk to this Joseph guy myself. I'm here to wish you a happy anniversary. Well, my anniversary was a couple months ago. What are you talking about? We all had a, an anniversary uh, a couple days ago. It was the 150th anniversary of the greatest solar storm ever to belch out and hit the Earth. Back then, didn't do much. Made the northern lights sparkle plenty and, and made telegraph wires burn a little bit. But today, if we were hit by that same size solar storm, the entire electrical power grid would be knocked out. Of the United States? Of the United States, at least. According to the National Academy of Sciences, not just me, Governor, the National Academy of Sciences, which is the closest thing we have to a Supreme Court, a scientific opinion in this world, up to 130 million people would be without electricity for months or years. We would lose basic security, emergency telecommunications, fresh water, because the pumps are electric, and we are vulnerable. And you're predicting that that is going to happen at what point in time? 2012. This is the report. It includes opinions from experts around the world. It concludes that solar storms could lead to a cascade of catastrophe. Well, if this is such a threat then, and it's only a couple years away, why isn't it more on the radar screen? When the National Academy of Sciences report came out, it did get a little bit of buzz and a little bit of press, but it's even more than that. The next month, NASA discovered something that makes the why now more urgent than ever. And that is? A squadron of five NASA satellites called Themis, T-H-E-M-I-S, flew through a hole in the Earth's magnetic field that goes from the pole to the equator. Why is that important? Because the Earth's magnetic field protects us from blasts from the sun. Its yeah. job is to repel them and spin the blasts around so they don't hit the surface of the Earth. Sure. Except that this group of satellites found that there's this giant hole in the Earth's magnetic field. It's like the shields are down, Scotty. They're supposed to be up, but they're down. Again, no exaggeration. December 2008, NASA reports its Themis spacecraft have discovered a giant breach in the magnetosphere, ten times larger than any thought to exist. And that's the Earth situation right now? The shields are down? It is. What do we do to prepare for this? We need to install ground resistors. Just place those resistors in between the ground and the transformer and protect the transformers. Keep us from shorting out the nation. But if it's that easy to do, why isn't it being done? Because we have one problem, and it's not money, it's not technology. It's politics, Governor. Politics. We are maybe just a few years away from destruction, the likes of which no society has ever seen. Really? Yeah.
object they saw last night. It's circled in blue. Unfortunately, in both pictures, it looks like a dot, barely visible. But in person, the UFO looked much larger and unlike anything the family had seen before. It was looking like, like, like this one. When I saw that, that was the same side, like this one. But that was moving like this, you know, like this. After, stay and go. You know? Monica, their daughter, noticed the flying objects first from just inside their house. And then I, I came out in the back, I called my mom and dad, and then I saw it stay in one place for 15 seconds. It was tipping to the right and left, sort of like this, and then it went straight west. What the hell is that? Exactly two weeks ago, another Port Alberni family saw UFOs, and they recorded this footage on their video camera. The similarities are striking. Both sightings were on Monday nights, both within similar hours, and both from the same neighborhood. The first sightings were just after 5 and 6 p.m. Last night, they saw the rounded saucers at 7.30. There were probably 1,500 reported cases at that time. And they were going somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 to 14,000 miles an hour. He just flew right, he just flew right over me. They covered the distance from Columbus to Detroit in something like 20,000 miles an hour. They have an unidentified flying object. He told us we could not talk about this to anyone. I didn't want to look at it any longer than that because I felt that my life was in jeopardy. He said, you are never to speak of this again. As far as you're concerned, this never happened. They estimated 100 yards from the left wing was this 100-foot disc. So it would go from 1 o'clock, 7 or 8 miles to uh, 6, 7 o'clock, 7 or 8 miles inside of uh, 4 or 5 seconds. Uh, you have to be moving pretty quickly. Once they started moving, they went straight up, you know, for a while, and then they went zap. Then it just sort of disappeared and dematerialized. Measures have been taken by agencies to terminate people who appear to be inconvenient or troublesome if you're lying too much. I never saw this. I don't exist, and this situation never happened.